Yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity, isn't it, um, to have the two programs uh, training together. It's just um, you know an extension of the connection that the two groups are, are making. You know, um, I've got a pretty good relationship with rats, and um, I think that just really flows through down to the teams. And you know, they say the teams are a mirror of yourselves, and um, I think it's really important that it's genuine. And today, showing that it is. And um, you know, the, you know, Rats has already made really strong relationships with the girls uh, last year for the VFL program. So it's just really important to have that connection, sense of belongingness, and you know, just the the, the value of having that between the two teams when it's authentic um, really speaks volumes. That was Peter Searle speaking at uh, St Kilda's training session on the weekend, part of their Christmas party. The weekend just gone where the men and the women uh, entered the field together and trained on the same park at Moorabbin. And uh, post-Christmas, it's really going to happen very, very quickly. We're delighted to be joined by Jamie Cox, who was a very, very fine cricketer and now working in the football space with the Saints for about five years in regards to their future football programs. And Jamie, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. How do you go balancing those loves, I guess? So we know your, your cricket background as a, a fine first-class servant with Tasmania and now obviously working in, in football, so combining a, a couple of those passions. Uh, am I correct in saying you're still doing a bit of cricket stuff? Yeah, it's a delicate balance. Um, I tend to spend a couple of days a fortnight down in Tassie and um, it's really a labour of love, I guess. It's, a, it's an association, the game that was great to me for a long time. So to be back involved there is... Uh, is really exciting, but it's equally exciting to be involved, you know, from day one of this list build and this program build towards AFLW. The fact that it's now only uh, a month away is um, is really exciting. G'day, Jamie. Thanks for joining us. Um, now, there's been, obviously, as we're saying, a lot of excitement about this club, getting our women's team in, and um, a lot of reports there's a few players that were really excited to actually jump on board and just made it their thing to get to the club. Um, some of the players are looking out for this season. Who who will we be looking at the, bit, at the most? Um, mate, it's a really difficult one. We've, well, I think we've, and this will this might sound a bit cliche, but we've got a very even group. Um, we, we went pretty hard during the expansion process to try and recruit good people uh, and experienced AFLW players and Delighted that, you know, the likes of Nat Exxon, uh, Kate McCarthy, uh, Kat Phillips, Jess Sejanary uh, have decided to commit to the Saints from, from other states and other clubs interstate, as well as some of our returning Southern Saints from the previous year who had been drafted. So with that core group, it was super. Um, we added to that with our last year's VFL group, another dozen or so, and then went to the draft and picked up our bottom seven and the teller we picked up at the draft, um, the likes of Georgia Patrikios, uh, who we got with pick three, um, we very openly said that if we had pick one, we would have also taken Georgia. So we're delighted to have her. Um, young Tani White, who's a Queenslander, who's come down, is a natural footballer, coming back from an ACL 18 months ago, but is getting back to her best now. Zick, Nick Zenos. He's just an exciting little speed machine who played in Collingwood's Premiership team last year. Um, you know, Rosie Dillon, one of the better players out of the VFLW competition last year from Hawthorne. So we actually feel like we're pretty well equipped. But if I gave you the name of a superstar, I, look, I'd probably say Patrikios will be a standout. Uh, I think she's just silk. She's got great class. She's, a, she's just a very natural footballer who I think... Um, will excite a lot of Saints uh, AFLW fans. Um, Jamie, Nick Flitter here. Thanks for coming on the show, mate. Um, just in terms of, obviously, the first year of, of the new the new women's footy club, how important is kind of educating the girls on the history of the footy club, um, especially given they're going to be playing at, at Moorabbin, at the spiritual home? Um, you know, How important is, is that history to, I guess, what is essentially a new franchise? Yeah, it was a critical part, Nick, and it was actually a real key part of the pitch that we made to any girls looking to to come to the Saints, that we've been a men's footy club for 140 years. We've been a, a female footy club for probably about two and a half. Um, so, you know, we don't pretend to get everything right, but we've, we've learned a lot through having to sit and wait and watch others uh, enter the AFLW. So, um, yeah, mate, the history of the Saints, uh, it's, 
it's almost tragic in many ways. The fact we've won one premiership, there's, it, it's a story of almost, but it's a story of, you know, great players, great times. Um, there should no doubt have been more premierships come out of St Kilda, but it's uh, it's been a key part of our growth to our girls, and, and I think someone said it off the start. A lot of the girls I know have committed to St Kilda um, based on our short history in the women's game, uh, but also the way we've gone about it and... and we're really pleased with what we've managed to assemble. Jamie Cox is the head of emerging football programs at the Saints. Uh, in regards to that, that educational aspect of it, conversely for the, the men as well, we saw in training the other day, both sides training together, running out onto the ground effectively together, which was a really terrific thing to see. But, but even educating them as well and saying that, um, look, we, we know that, Men's football, as you say, has been around for, for 150 years at, at St Kilda, but uh, educating them on the importance of this new new step, the, the diversity of it, and, and obviously the opportunities that opens up for them and, and even potentially their daughters going forward. Yeah, to be fair, they've been terrific, our guys. Um, they've been really curious and really open towards opening up the football club for the girls. And certainly under um, you know Rats' leadership and some of the senior players, They've been exceptional at welcoming the guy, uh, the girls into the club. It, it just, we did challenge the guys. We did basically say, hey, boys, it's been your footy club for a long time, but no longer, you know, you're going to have to share. So the quicker you make it comfortable for these girls, um, the better we can enjoy what it now feels like a, you know, a proper football club having been back, relocated back to Moorabbin for, uh, for a couple of years. So uh, they've been outstanding very welcoming, very engaging with the girls, and I know the girls have appreciated certainly being welcomed into uh, a great footy club like the Saints. Now, the South East Corridor community have really got behind the team, it seems. Um, there have been a lot of community involvement with some of the players and businesses and things around that. Um, what have been some of the really good stories that come out of the local community getting behind the team and just, just the support that the new team is getting yeah well we, we we pitched hard i think it might have also been mentioned off the bounce to um to be part of aflw from the start based on what we knew was just really strong support Bayside. and you know we've got probably i don't know i'm, I'm guessing at the moment but probably half our squad have Bayside origins so the girls that largely are in our group have come through our uh, vfl program um, a lot of them cross coders, which is pretty consistent uh, inside the girls' game. You get a lot of girls who are elite at another sport, but choose, now they can actually play football, choose to go and play a game that they've followed all their lives but just never been able to play. So, um, so many of the girls have, have crossed over, and, and you're right. I mean, the local supports, particularly through the SMJFL, who share the facility with us here at Moorabbin, um, the support through... The SNJFL in particular has been uh, has been fantastic, and um, we hope to obviously that turn that into a really strong breeding ground for our footy club for years to come. Uh, Jamie, I'm, I'm going to put you a bit on the spot here, mate. Um, I heard a whisper uh, late last week that internally the club had a goal of uh, about a thousand memberships for the AFLW team, uh, and yep. that uh, kind of as of earlier this week or late last week, we'd well and truly passed that goal. Uh, to the point where we would run out of membership packs and run out of uh, cards. Can, can you confirm or deny this? I can't, uh, I can't confirm the running out of the cards piece, but I can confirm it's been wildly successful. And I know the number, the last I heard, it was over 1,400. So, uh, and that was a little while ago. So, look, it has been popular. And there's genuine support and genuine love for what the girls are now able to do. I mean, to commit to an AFLW membership... Uh, is an interesting thing because you don't really get a lot for it. The games are free to go. Um, but what it is is a show of faith in that this is a growing product uh, and something that, oh, look, I'm convinced, having been involved for now for, for a couple of years and haven't seen it grow, that in five years' time, this will be a seriously good product. It, it will actually have a, a generation then of young footballers and not just cross-coders coming in to play it. Um, it'll be right up there with the best of female sports um, as a spectacle because it's um, it's already attracting some real high-end quality athletes 
um, and we're about to get a, a whole group of high-end quality footballers who are also good athletes come into it. So, you know, to be a member of, I think, the first thing of anything, um, yeah, great, great testament to great testament to our, you know, 1,400-odd Saints fans that have chosen to be part of that. Um, you know, our club is ambitiously chasing 50,000 members a- across the football club this year, and, and certainly it's great that the AFL girls are, uh, are playing their part in helping the club reach that number. Saints fans, one 467 246 Get in touch and, and uh, organise your membership for 2020, both of the men and the women. Jamie, Peter Searle... Obviously, a really important kind of figurehead for the, the, the women's program at, at our club. She was also, prior to that, a, a really important person in the, in the football department for the men's program. How important was it for the club to have Peter move from, from the men's program to the, the, the women's program to, and to be involved at, at that level? Um, yeah, Pete's, uh, look, Pete has been enormous. Um, she's coached our VFL team for two years. Uh, she comes with an enormous amount of experience. She will be the only female AFLW coach next year. Um, that in itself is quite daunting, but something we and, and she are very proud of. Um, just to have Peter's experience in girls' football and to understand the challenges our girls deal with to commit to football has been enormous. And I know a lot of the girls have connected very quickly with Peter uh, for exactly that reason, but... You know, she's developed a relationship, a great relationship with with Rats and the other uh, senior men's coaches as well, which enables this lovely transfer of intellectual property, I suppose, across both programs. So we are very lucky. We've managed to integrate both our programs pretty well, um, as as, as well as what you can do. I mean, they're obviously, they need their own space, both the men and the women. But uh, Peter's and Brett, for that matter, have both been a massive part of um, of growing to where we are right now. It's just um, uh, now the important bit. It's time to play some games. That's right. And the first of those games is Sunday the 9th of February. Once you get through Christmas, that's not all that far away. And it is at the Spiritual Heartland, Moorabbin, 10 past three against the Western Bulldogs, who are the inaugural premiership winners in this competition and have obviously been one of those, those founding teams in the AFLW. And one would expect with the Saints playing at Moorabbin quite a bit in the uh, the months of February and March that we're going to get uh, quite uh, quite impressive crowds and, and hopefully a really good standard of footy. Jamie, well done on all the work you're doing and, and thanks for joining us. Uh, Pleasure, Darren. Thanks, guys. It's uh, exciting times.